Microsoft Flight Simulator is one of the most interesting franchises in the history of gaming. Not only because of its longevity, despite fewer and fewer releases in the latter part of its nearly 40 year legacy, but also because of the generations of gamers who have been drawn in by its simple gameplay premise and the variable and deep complexity found within that gameplay. The series technically began in 1979 with the release of FS1 Flight Simulator on the Apple II, but then another version released for the TRS-80 in 1980, and then finally, Flight Simulator 1.0 was released in 1982 via Microsoft. But my own introduction to the franchise came in 1998, when Microsoft released their Combat Flight Simulator, which also happened to coincide with my fascination with all things planes, and I mean really, what six-year-old doesn't want to fly a plane? I can remember my dad playing the game one night, with me watching over his shoulder as he fiddled with the keyboard and mouse to try and maintain airspeed during a bombing run in one of the many missions that are offered in the main menu. Now, I probably watched over his shoulder for about an hour, just stunned at the then incredible, realistic looking graphics and weather effects. The fact that you could select so many varieties of planes in so many different locations was absolutely mind-blowing to six-year-old me. Now, my dad eventually, graciously, let me try out one of the training missions on my own and thus started my personal history with the franchise. Uh, as a side note, I tried my hardest to get my own footage of the game, along with footage from uh, Flight Simulator 98 and 2004, but I couldn't get Combat Flight Simulator or Flight Simulator 98 to work properly on my computer, and 2004 was the only version that worked, but it kept crashing whenever I tried to screen capture. So the moral of the story is, spending $30 on eBay to get old games sometimes only gets you frustration. But at least I have cool hard copies of a few old games now. Anyway, back to the video. The freedom that Microsoft's Flight Simulator series offers a 6-year-old and now a 28-year-old is one of the most complete that I've ever experienced. But when I think about this series and how I was introduced to it, I always come back to thinking about my dad. Both my dad and I have type 1 diabetes. He was diagnosed early on in his childhood, but I got lucky and I was diagnosed on my 17th birthday. So I got to live all of my childhood and most of my adolescence free from the problems of living with a disease like diabetes. It wasn't until I was diagnosed myself that I began to realize what exactly it meant for the rest of my life. Certain avenues that had once been open to me would now be permanently closed off, short of a cure being developed at some point. Piloting a commercial or a military aircraft? All of that was suddenly impossible. Even joining the military was basically off the table. Now, I hadn't known exactly what I wanted to do with my life when I was 17, but I'd always loved the idea of potentially piloting a jumbo jet full of passengers, or training for dogfights inside an F-18 Hornet, or maybe even going into space on a shuttle. But once that diagnosis came up for me, I started to realize that my dad had been dealing with those limitations since he was just four years old. And it dawned on me that maybe playing Microsoft Flight Simulator was a way for him to bypass those limitations and engage in experiences, albeit vastly inferior, to those he was unable to have in real life. And the same would now be true for me. Now, diabetics can still be private pilots, but the FAA has recently allowed for people with diabetes to apply for their wings in the commercial industry because of the advancements of medical technologies that diabetics now have access to. But the same is obviously not allowed within the military. Even so, there's a ton of rigorous steps you need to go through to get the medical certificates to be approved for flight. And at this point, in both me and my dad's lives, I think we're both too far gone within our own lives and careers to try and go down that particular avenue. But that same freedom that Flight Simulator offered my dad and me back in 1998 still exists, and it's abundantly clear that the developers of Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 have outdone themselves in both the graphical fidelity of the game itself and in the realistic depictions of the real-world planes that anyone can choose to sit inside of and pilot. Flight sims aren't really my favorite types of games to play, far from it actually, but to have literally the entire world laid out before me on my computer screen when it's basically impossible for me to do that in real life is the ultimate freedom for people like me and my dad. Being able to go through a flight checklist item by item and embrace the technical and the professional part of being a pilot from the comfort of my own desk chair is empowering like few other games have ever been for me. 
sadly, my dad doesn't play many video games much anymore, mainly Jez Ball and Minesweeper. His eyesight is declining and it's difficult for him to see and react to pretty much all of the fast-paced games that I tend to play, but I'm excited to show him Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 even just to see how he reacts to the improved visuals and to see how his passion for a game that was released back in 1998 carried through into me. And if he doesn't want to play himself, at the very least, I hope that he watches over my shoulder as I take to the skies. Hey everyone, this is Kyle from Subpixel. If you like this video and you're still around, give us a like, give us a subscribe, give us a kiss.